Amen. That's beautiful. Let's read the Word of God. We're actually... Okay, that's fine. I'm going to be reading a different translation, if you don't mind. So uh, I'm going to be reading the New Living Translation. So I know we have something in there, but if you don't mind, please listen to this one. I'm going to be uh, reading 3, 2, 5. And he says, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interest, but take an interest in others too. And then this is the key verse. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. I'm going to read the last verse one one more time because this is key for today's message which, by the way, is called the power of your attitude. I'm going to read that again. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Amen? Let us pray real quick. Father God, I thank you for this time, and I thank you um, for allowing us to be here today in this beautiful day. Father God, open our minds, our hearts, our spiritual ears, Father God, so we might listen to this word today, and we may be transformed by the power of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The message today, as I said before, is titled, The Power of Your Attitude. And this is, you know, it's a fundamental topic these days. You know, I think that when we look out there, the wave our society is going, you know, you know, and, and I'm pretty sure you have seen it. People's attitudes have changed. You know, we have a lot of people out there right now with a really bad attitude. And everything is about me. You know, I have an uncle of mine that says everyone is you know, the starring role in their movie, you know, which to me, that, that always blew my mind, you know. We are all, you know, bad men in our own movie, you know what I mean? And because of that, you know, we basically don't care about anybody else. Is all about me. We live sometimes by the gospel of me. Have you heard of that gospel? The gospel of me, you know, this is what I believe. I don't care what you say, what you may not say, but this is what I live by, Eric. And that is key. Now, Paul exhorts us to have an attitude, the attitude that our Lord had, or have, I should say. You know, um, you know and, and if you think about it, not a day goes by that you don't listen to this word attitude. You might hear it in your jobs, right? When you find someone that may have a good or a bad attitude. It's key, right? You hear it even in your homes. You, sometimes we go, wow, not you. I love you, son or daughter, but right now you're having a really bad attitude. Have you done that once in a while? Right? So, yeah, because it's another person, but it could be the attitude they have. But Paul is telling us that we should have the attitude that Christ had. Now, there are several definitions of attitude, several of them. But the first one is this. Listen to this definition closely because it will help you understand the message today. Especially young kids, young, young children that are here today. Your attitude is key for your life. You know, and you're going to see why through the message. But the first definition that we have is that attitude is an internal feeling expressed through our behavior. I'm going to repeat that. Internal feeling that is expressed through our behavior, right? So it's something inside of us, and then we express it. That's why we notice some people that even before they speak, you know what attitude they have, right? Haven't you noticed that? You go to a public place, you go to a public um, entity, and, and then you go in there, and you see the person is like, 
a sour face. You haven't spoken to them. You go, hey, good morning. And they go, yeah, good morning. I don't know what's good about this morning, but whatever. They have a bad attitude. And the same thing applies to people with a good attitude, right? You know what? One of the things I love about coming to this church is that you guys have a great attitude. You know, I come through here, and I say hi to everybody, and everybody's so welcoming. And I'm pretty sure Eric probably noticed that this morning. I saw him sitting over there, and then the brother said, hey, why don't you come sit over here with us? And, you know, that's welcoming. That's actually a good attitude. But you know what? It's actually coming from the inside of us, you know. Uh, and, and that is key for us this morning. The issue is that sometimes we are like that grandfather that was sleeping in the living room, and he had a, a, a big mustache, pretty much like uh, the brother has. And, you know, he was sleeping in there, and the grandchildren were around him, and they had this liquid stinky cheese, I don't know if you have one of those, and they put a little bit in his mustache. And when, when he woke up, right, he goes like, wow, this living room stinks. Let me go to the kitchen. And then he goes to the kitchen, and he goes like, wow, the kitchen stinks. And then he goes, he's like going crazy, you know, I need some fresh air. He goes to the outside, and he goes, the whole world stinks. And our attitude is like that. When you have a bad attitude, that follows you around, right? When you have a, th a, a bad attitude, you know, you can be in your home, you can be in your job, you can be traveling, you can be whatever. Have you ever met someone like that? Is It doesn't matter where you go. Yeah, somebody's pointing to uh, somebody else here. <clears throat> But, but that's good. But listen to this. Your attitude is key in your life, and I'm going to show you why. They, ha they have done studies about this, and this affects our, our church, everything we go. Now, you know, that's, that's usually what happened, you know. Now, the second definition of attitude, listen to this one, says that the, our attitude is an emotional Emotional and mental response to life's circumstances. Emotional, right? And mental response to life's circumstances. And why is that important to us, right? Because it says in there that we are the ones that choose our response to people's attitudes or the issues that we go through life. And that is always important. Now, why? This is the key, guys. Listen to this. Kids that are here, young people, everyone. You can never change. Say with me. You can never change someone else's attitude. We think we can, especially as parents. And I know some, someone may not like this. And as husbands and wives. Mm. But listen to the key. But you can always, say with me, always change your own attitude. A hundred percent. You cannot change anybody's attitude. But you can always change yours. Right? So you choose your response, your emotional response to other people's issues and attitude. And this is key for us, right? Because in life, you know, we're going to encounter circumstances, issues that, you know, are going to affect our lives. And how we respond to those is going to determine our future. Right? You can always, if you don't choose the right attitude, then you're going to be bitter all the time. You're going to be upset. You're going to be like you're, you're eating a lemon. 
something sour. You know, be like a sour, you know, this stinks, this world stinks, this church stinks, everything stinks. I didn't like that service. Then the guy came with that attitude message. I have a good attitude. Who, who he believes he is. Now, now, <clears throat> listen to this example, which I, I think is really key. An airplane has an attitude adjuster. Do you know that? That, is, that blew my mind when I read that. It has an attitude adjuster. When you raise the nose up, the plane, which is raising the attitude, the plane goes up and up. It keeps climbing. When you have a good attitude, then you keep climbing. You keep going places. People want to be with you. Why? Because you have a good attitude. But in the same sense, when you lower the attitude on an airplane, it actually goes down. It starts to descend. That's when nobody wants to be with you. Haven't you noticed people with a bad attitude, nobody wants to be around them? You approach them, and the first thing they say, oh, you know what? Pastor Hyman, you know, this guy, wow, you know, he comes here really fancy with that tie and everything else. But... <laughs> I have my, thought, my feelings about this guy. Always have something negative to say about somebody. And this is key as we evaluate this because you got to remember this. The issue with us is that sometimes we cannot tell if we have a good or a bad attitude. And we have to start looking inside. How's my attitude? Do I keep listening myself talking bad about everybody? Or am I always like, wow, you know, Pastor Paul is so amazing and his wife and this church and I love it here. What is my attitude? So you got to be careful with that. Listen to this. If you are positive, positive you see the best in people. You're always going to be wearing a smile. You're going to have a good attitude. And God's blessing and favor are always going to be with you. But if you're bitter, difficult to deal with, don't want to go to work, and you're always bitter with disappointments and all that, you're going to have a downcast attitude. And that is very, very powerful. And, and it's really, you know, you have to be careful. And we have to remind ourselves, because as Christians, we have a tendency of always blaming the enemy. No, it's not my attitude, Pastor. It's my boss. He's bad. You don't know my boss. Uh, it's not me, Pastor. It's my wife or my husband. They're bad. But sometimes it's not any of that. It's our attitude towards them. John Maxwell says, listen to this. I love this quote. Your attitude, not your aptitude, will determine your Altitude. I'm going to repeat that because I love it so much. Your attitude, not your aptitude, will determine your altitude. The better your attitude, the better you're going to do in life. And, and you're going to see why right now. Young people, listen to this. Many of us have been to college and universities, and some of you may have masters and doctorates and all that, right? The University of Yale did a statistic about successful people. How are they successful? And listen to this fact. Successful people were using 15, 15, one five, 15 percent of their knowledge. Their success was determined by 15 percent of their knowledge and 85 percent their attitude. Wow, that blew my mind. I don't know about you. Haven't you noticed that all the stuff that you study in, 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 in college or universities, you're only using like probably one-tenth of it? You're like, wow, you know, all that math and all that science and all this craziness stuff that I study, I'm only using probably one-tenth of it. But your attitude is everything. Would you rather have an, an employee that when you tell them, hey, you know, I want you to do this, 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 and that, and they go, yes, I'm going to do it. When do you need it, today or tomorrow? Or you have somebody that knows a lot, 
has all this PH and all these degrees, and every time you tell him something, they go, oh, well, I don't know. I'm pretty busy right now. You know, uh, maybe in a month I'll give that to you. What would you rather have? Now, now, our example of attitude is always Christ. Always Christ. And that's why Paul says you must have. Must, notice the must, you must have the same attitude that Christ had. Now, let me give you the three attitudes that Christ had and what we need to imitate. We need to concentrate on this. First of all, he was humble. Say it with me, humble. That is key for our lives. Listen to this fact. Many people that have a bad attitude they believe they're better than anyone else. Start noticing that. You'll be like, oh, Pastor, Pastor Ivan was right. You know, this guy is really, he has a bad attitude, and he believes he's better than anybody else. He always look at people like, eh. But Christ wasn't like that. He was humble. How do we know that? Because he said, be humble. Philippians 2, 3, and 4 says, thinking of others as better than yourselves. This is, this is Christ. Don't look out only for your own interest, but take an entrance in others too. What did Christ do? Being God, being the creator of the universe, he took an entrance not in himself, but in who? In us. He humbled himself. He didn't have to do it, but he did. Why? Because he was humble. And part of having a good attitude is being humble. Humble will help you listen. Sometimes, we, because we are so prideful, we say, no, I'm not listening to that. I know better than that. I don't have to be humble. He's not in my shoes. You have to be humble every day. And not only that, and this is a problem that we have in this society. That's what I was telling you in the beginning, that we are, are the starring role in, in all our movies. We think we're better than everybody else. Nobody else can do our job. Nobody else can do it as I do it. Yes? OK, good. But you have to be humble. The second thing that Christ does to show us an attitude to, toward that we have to imitate is that he knew his identity. God knew, Jesus knew who he was. And the issue that we have nowadays is sometimes we have a bad attitude, bad attitude because we don't know who we are. And we think that with this bad attitude, people are going to respect us. But the word of God says, though he was God, he did not think of equally with God as something to uh, clinging to. He knew who he was. We need to know who we are in order for us to have a good attitude. In other words, we don't need to prove anybody anything. And when we have that attitude, we have a good attitude. Third, real quickly, he became a servant. He became a servant. That's an attitude that we need nowadays. He sa it says in verse 8, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died as a criminal on a cross. He, 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 he definitely became a servant. Listen to this. In order for you to have a good attitude, you have to serve others. You know, people that usually have a bad attitude, they don't want to do anything for anybody. People want to be served. Serve me. Help me. Listen to me. Do this for me. That's usually a bad attitude. Now, <clears throat> you know, I love talking about principles, right? The principle of sowing applies here. You reap what you sow. You're going to see in your future that the seeds that you're planting today, you're going to see them come up. Our attitude is a massive seed that we, we sow around us. And it is what we'll reap in the future. If we have a bad attitude, that's what we're going to get. That's why that example of the guy with the mustache, stinky mustache, is so important. Now, <clears throat> 
you know, this is a two-part message, but I'm trying to compress it like as much as I can, guys. Uh, but I'm trying to give you, leave you with something that you may be able to apply to your lives. Uh, so I'm going to give you sort of like, you know, what can I do then, Pastor? You know, to change my attitude, you know. Uh, remember, the first uh, definition is coming from inside. You can use a makeup and on the exterior have a good attitude. But in time, that bad attitude that is inside of you will show up. So it's not good to do that. You have to be yourself. But now, what should I do today, today, to change my attitude? You have to continually analyze, evaluate, not the attitude of others. We're really good at that, right? Oh, he has a good, bad attitude. Oh, she, oh, pff, pastor, forget about her. No, 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 no. We're not talking about anybody else. Here today, you got to start thinking. Let, let me show you how it's done. No one wants to talk to me. That might be a sign. Nobody approaches me. That might be a sign. At work, am I by myself all the time? When I speak to people, am I always saying negative things? Do I never have anything good to say about anybody? You got to analyze yourself and, and go, I may have a bad attitude, you know? And how do I change that? Because I have to imitate that. You, 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 you know, you have to change your attitude. So you got to analyze yourself, scrutinize yourself. You got to look inside of you daily. David says, look inside of me, O oh Lord. And see if there's any inequity ways inside of me. David was making a prayer to ask God to show him how he was. We need to do that once in a while. God, show me. This might be the reason why you're having problems with your kids, with your wife, with your husband at work. It's just that you have a bad, you don't have a, a you're not humble, you're not a servant, etc. We have to take a daily initiative, daily. This is daily. Paul says, you know, you have, you have, you must have this attitude. We have to do this daily, every day. Think, how can I improve my attitude? How can I actually be better? You have to start with a goal in mind. Sometimes it's the fact that we don't even have a goal in our lives. What is your goal in regards to the attitude that you have? Are you imitating Christ? Are you being Christ-like? Or are you just being you? Just think about that. Third, the change must come from within. This is key. Start, start changing your heart, your thoughts, positive thoughts. You know, looking at the good things of, of life. And this is the, the fourth thing that you have to remember. The process of change of attitude will take you all your life. All of it. We're going to keep improving. We're going to keep changing. But at the end, we got to imitate Christ. He is our reference. He is our example for us to follow. We have to follow him. And we have to study him and know him so we can be better and better every day like Christ is. Amen? Amen. Amen. I did it better today. Thank God. I, it was shorter today. I was striving to be shorter today. So it didn't take me that long. Um, <clears throat> I think now we do a hymn. Yes. I even knew that today. So that I'm getting better, guys. And amen.